All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing, let's see, Hunter's Death by Michelle West, and this is book number two in her 16-book series, which is called, basically, um, let's see, the Sun Sword series, or the House War series, or some might even call it the, uh, I think those are the two. I think they're, anyway, we'll go through and we'll discuss why there's different names for some of these uh, books. But they're all, they're all chronological, I've lined them up in chronological order right here from 1 to 16. Book number one, um, Hunter's Oath, I reviewed about a year ago, so now we are to book number two, and I will eventually read and review all of them for the channel. So this is book number two in this massive series. Let's talk about, well, it came out in 1996. That's how long this series is. It's like 30 years running. Um, 1996, you know I love graphic design and cover artwork, so let's talk about the cover first. It's got a great cover by Jody Lee. Now, Jody Lee did all, let's see, she did 15 of the 16 covers. And all of them are spectacular. She is one of my, Jody is one of my favorite artists. And um, they just look good. Every single one of them looks really good. And Daw Books has done a nice job of, you know, packaging the whole series so it looks decent on the shelf. And so that's that with the aesthetics. What is it about? Well, Hunter's uh, death follows right on the heels of Hunter's Oath, um, <clears throat> where we're just getting to know some of the main characters that we're going to be following throughout this whole series. Uh, we're getting to know some of them at the very youngest of ages. I mean, Jewel Marcus is one of the main characters that uh, interweaves herself through uh, the entire 16 books. She is 15 in this book. Um, she's a thief. Um, she's sort of a pickpocket, like an orphan, living in the underbelly of the city of Avar. I think it's, it's how, is, how is this spelled? Averlan, A-V-E-R-L-A-A-N, Averlan, the most ancient of cities in this world that uh, Michelle West has created. Um, she's living underneath this place, exploring the labyrinth of tunnels underneath Averlan, just a massive city with a massive underground. She's got her um, thief, pickpocket friends, Duster, Carver, and um, their mentor, Wrath, who also plays a role in some of these other books. Um, that's one of our main characters. But then we've kind of got two storylines going simultaneously here. The other storyline involves Hunter Lord Gilliam and uh, his hunt brother Stephen, who were pretty much the main characters in this first book, The Hunters. Um, you know, you can see those two guys right there on the cover, hunting with their dogs. And there's the Hunter Lord. I mean, there's a lot of, like, pagan-like sort of uh, magics going through here where they pray to the Hunter Lord. They, there's a lot of different gods and deities that are worshipped in this world that Michelle West has um, uh, created. This book takes place mostly around the um, massive city of Avalon. Uh, like I said, the most ancient of cities. Home of magics, both dark and light. Um... But what few know is it was once the place of very dreadful magic, um, a place where evil ruled, a place ruled by an actual dark lord. In fact, he's called the Dark Lord of Hells, if that isn't as dark as can be. You know what I mean? Now, he was ca the Dark Lord of Hells was cast back into his, his own dark realm ancient, ancient times ago. I, that doesn't make, you know, a long time ago. And um, there he was sort of forgotten, just sort of forgotten. But once again, in this book, he is stir it's stirring to get him and his minions are stirring again to life. And Jewel and this 
then her cronies, their cronies of thieves, um, they, um, with their access to the labyrinthine tunnels that are under the city and a lot of the stuff that's going on in the underbelly of the city, they're starting to notice through just subtle little hints and things that maybe this Dark Lord is returning. Um, uh, you know, the threat, there's a, I mean, they see this threat, um, and it's been carefully, the threat has been carefully hidden by spells and illusions, but they're kind of starting to see through this. They go ahead and they warn, um, the Terrafin, who, who is the head of the most powerful family in the city. And, um, there is kind of the, one of the storylines that we've got, and I won't get into too much more of that. Hunt, uh, Gilliam and, uh, and Stephen, the Hunt brothers, they go on sort of a quest outside of the borders of their own realm, sort of this, um, well, there's no, no other way to describe it, but with it, but a quest. And they got the, this person there that's guiding them, a seer named Evane, and that's sort of the other storyline. And these storylines kind of interweave together and stuff like that. It's just great. I want to just say that I read this a long, long time ago, and I absolutely enjoyed reading this again. This was, this was probably one of my favorite fantasy reads in quite a while, um, uh, just the Michelle West's writing is just top notch. Um, the characters are great. She describes the world and the world building is excellent. Uh, it's just a very, very, very solid fantasy novel that I'd forgotten about, that I'd forgotten about. And the first time I read it, maybe didn't quite appreciate it for what it actually was. And um, so my reread of this really got me jazzed to start reading the rest of these other books. I've read them all as they've come out over the years, just read them all once. And some of the the, lay, the first ones like this, I don't remember a whole lot about. I'm glad I reread this because I was into this quite a lot. I mean, I really, really sunk my teeth into this one. And it's a good 700-page book as are pretty much all of them. The book number one is probably is the shortest one, and it's only about 400 pages. But the rest are in the seven to 800 page realm. So it's a really, really good epic fantasy series to get into if you want to. Um, I gotta give this a, a solid 9.5 out of 10. It's just really, really enjoyable. 